welcome to the first part to a three-part series about my impactful figure, Heidi Lamar. So in this first part, we'll be discussing her acting career. In the second part, we'll be discussing her engineering career. And in the third and last part, we'll be discussing her awards, achievements, inventions, and why I chose her as my impactful figure. So just to start off, a little bit of information about Hedy Lamar's early life. She was born November 9th, 1914 in Vienna, Austria. She was born Hedwig Keisler. She had a mother who was very artistic and a father who was very scientific. Her mother placed her in lots of dance and art classes, which opened her to the world of acting, while her father inspired her at a very young age. I have a quote from the National Women's History Museum, and it states, at only five years of age, she could be found taking apart and reassembling her music box to understand how the machine operated. So as you could tell, at a very young age, she started to grow into her very brilliant mind, and this is one of the reasons why I chose her. Um, here's a fun fact. She had an IQ of 154, while the IQ that deemed you a genius is 140. So in 1913, she was in her first movie called Ecstasy. I do not recommend watching this movie. Very controversial, very vulgar, very inappropriate. It was so horrible that Hitler denounced it. Um, she was discovered by Max Reinhardt at the age of 16 and was in Ecstasy at 18. But in the same year, she met her first husband, first husband out of six, might I add, and his name was Frederick Mandel. Now, Frederick Mandel was not a good person. He had ties with the Mussolini and the Nazis, which Hedy's parents did not approve of because they were of Jewish descent. So Mandel was described as very abusive and controlling. He would lock Hedy in her own house and would stop her from going out and filming movies. But luckily, um, Hedy managed to escape. Now, this is another quote, but it's by history.co.uk. Um, and it is an it was from an article about Hedy Lamar. This is my favorite thing about her. This is my most favorite thing to read about her. And here it is. So in order to escape, Lamar supposedly drugged her maid with sleeping pills before stealing her outfit, lining the insides of, of it with jewelry, and then fleeing on the maid's bicycle. So she fled to Paris and then moved to London in 1937 in order to track down a man named Louis B. Meyer, who at the time was the head of MGM, which was a very large production company. I'll put a picture of it here. Um, it doesn't sound like when I first read it, I didn't understand it. Didn't I didn't recognize it. But as soon as I looked it up and saw a picture of it, I knew exactly what production company it was. So um, yeah, so <laughs> um, the fun thing about Hetty in Louis, she tracked him down managed to get a contract of only six months of $125 a week. She turned him down immediately because she knew her worth and then immediately regretted it. She once again tracked him down, this time on a boat back to the Americas, where over the voyage, she um, convinced him to give her a three year, <laughs> con seven years, seven years, sorry, seven year contract of $500 a week. So I'd say that's a very, very huge jump from years and money, but um, that really just shows how uh, she persevered to get into this acting career. So I think that's amazing. Um, her acting career span was about from 1933 to 1959. At 1959, she left MGM Studios and went on to make her own production of films and she was one of the first female producers. So a list of my favorite and some of her most popular movies were Samson and Delilah, 1949, Boomtown, 1940, and my absolute favorite, My Favorite Spy in 1951. I'm going to put a clip right here. It's from IM IMDB, and here it is. You need a rest, Eric. Your nerves are showing. Lily. Lily Dalbray. Are you surprised? Should I be? Well, surely you didn't expect me here after Vienna? Well, I didn't expect you in Vienna after uh, Cairo. Since you are here, we might as well take up where we left off. What was that for? So, sadly, um, about in the 1960s, she became addicted to drugs and plastic surgery, and she was caught shoplifting on two occasions. Luckily, she was not convicted of either, but um, her life did start to go downhill, but... 
every actor's life starts to go downhill until finally near the end of her filming career she directed her attention to engineering um with help of her boyfriend at the time howard hughes which is a perfect segue into our next part discussing her engineering career so yeah